Toyota has its authentic SUVs, the 4Runner and the Land Cruiser. But let's face it, not every family is going rock crawling or on safari, even though we wish we were. For the families that need the SUV space but not the SUV gear, there's the Toyota Highlander. It's new this year, and a lot's changed. So, how does it stack up against the Dodge Durango and the Nissan Pathfinder? Hi, I'm Joel Fetter, and we'll take a look in this latest video road test of the 2014 Toyota Highlander. Let's start with the inside story. It's massive, and while that's not news, this new, better looking cabin is. Now it's been spending some time at the spa, and that's a good thing. These big gauges and real climate controls, those are a welcome sight. Off for navigation, you'll get this big touchscreen. The actual dashboard shape is new, and we like it. It's refined and feels nice. We also love these storage bins strewn about the cabin for small items, like a cell phone. There's plenty of room up front here. But if we had our choice, we would put the base cloth seats from the Highlander in all models because these leather ones aren't quite as supportive. But some of the leather ones do offer ventilation, which we kind of depend on in the summer. Behind the front seats, the Highlander will haul five or six people, depending on how you configure it. Now, you can get a split folding three-person bench seat with a recline feature or a pair of captain's chairs like our tester. We really like that recline feature for long road trips and the sliding function, that's pretty slick too. This third row back here, well, it's still for kids, teenagers, and maybe a guest who stayed a few days too long. But behind the third row, there's more storage space, almost 14 cubic feet. Fold away the second and third row seats, and there's as much space as a Ford Flex or a Mercedes GL. Safety gets a makeover in the Highlander too. With eight airbags and a standard rear view camera, the Highlander earns some of the best crash test scores of all. And now you can order blind spot monitors, a lane departure warning system, and parking sensors. The Highlander returns with the same powertrain as last year, but it actually performs better thanks to improved ride and handling. Now the base powertrain is a four cylinder engine rated at 185 horsepower. If this sounds like a price layer to you, that's because it's actually better than that. Unfortunately, it'll be kind of tough to find in showrooms. There's also a Highlander Hybrid with 280 net horsepower and a CVT, but it's an expensive way to get better gas mileage. It's rated 28 miles per gallon combined, but we've observed less in previous hybrids. The four cylinder will get 22 combined. Most Highlanders will come with a 270 horsepower V6 with either front or all wheel drive. This version is not the quickest crossover we know, but it'll get the job done while turning in 21 miles per gallon on average and towing up to 5,000 pounds. The V6 Highlander is the most versatile performer, but across the board, this crossover has better road manners than before. The suspension has been reworked and there is less body motion and a better controlled ride. It is not too firm, though we'd avoid the optional 19-inch wheels. It's not as quiet or as cushy as the outgoing model, but this new Highlander doesn't feel nearly as clumsy as it once did. For about $30,000, the Highlander comes standard with Bluetooth, power features, a nicely composed cabin, and on the option list, there's a power driver seat, satellite radio, and a power tailgate, as well as navigation and blind spot monitors. Load it up and you're at about $45,000 for a gas-powered Highlander and $50,000 for a hybrid model. So what's the bottom line? The 2014 Toyota Highlander covers familiar family territory without straying too far into adventure land. Be sure to follow The Car Connection on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. I'm Joel Fetter, and thanks for watching.